Now that the bottom end is together, you're ready to spec out your cylinder, piston, and rings. This piston kit that I got was a WSM Performance. And the piston cylinder wall clearance for Polaris 400. Kind of hard to see here. Three to four thousandths of an inch. Your ring end gap, they call out nine to eighteen thousandths of an inch. So using my caliper, which isn't the best tool, but we can make it work, I will measure the piston to cylinder wall clearance and I will also, using a feeler gauge, check the ring end gap. And from there I will install the cylinder, the piston, the head, and all the gaskets. First thing I'll do with the scalloper, measure the diameter of the cylinder. I'll lay it down like that. Want to check the widest spot, which here looks like 3.299 inches. You we'll want to check the piston, and for this player's 400, you want to go down 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom of the skirt to measure piston width, piston diameter. And there you see we get 3.295. So the cylinder, 3.299, subtract. 3.295 actually gives us four thousandths so we are within that specification for piston to cylinder wall clearance so for the ring end gap being nine to eighteen thousandths of an inch I'll take one ring and I'll place it on the top and I'll put it down I don't know probably about an inch then we'll flip the cylinder over then I'll put put another ring on this side Again, put it an inch down so it's in there. Uh, once it's in there, and you know it's it's you know level across, then what you'll want to do is just take your feeler gauges, check it between the ring gap, and check it per the spec. I put a little bit of oil in my rings before I do this, just to keep everything lubed up. But uh, I'll put the rings in there, then I'll check them and show you how it's done. So I have the rings in there on the top side and on the bottom side just use a six millimeter bolt with a, with a flanged end and I would set that in there around like this to get the distance all the way around the ring the same and same with this side I took the four points here 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 and here Made sure the ring was, you know, at the bottom each time, just to keep it centered around. Then next, take feeler gauges and check them. I want to just show how to do one of these, and uh, I'll take my. I got it narrowed down, but this one here is the thirteen thousandths. You can see it slides right through there. You take a fourteen thousandths. It doesn't fit. So we know that that one there is, is within spec. Uh, do the same with the bottom side. And if it's in spec, you are ready to put the rings on the piston. And from there, put the piston on your rod. Then assemble the cylinder on the bottom end. We'll first want to install this base gasket. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is take this gasket maker put some around the bottom end then I'll throw the gasket on then I'll throw another layer of this on first layer of gasket makers on then we'll want to slip the gasket over throw another layer on now that that's done it's just a real thin layer you want to put your rings on your piston put your piston in place now that arrow goes toward the mag side or rewind side First thing I do, lay the piston down, I install one of these clips on one side, then from there you can put your piston on, your connecting rod, arrow again to the mag side, 
Then you can install your wrist pin and your bearing and the other clip. So there I have the first clip in. And what I do, I'm just going to show you real quick. I place the wrist clip like that. I get it started. Once it's started, I hold it down with one hand, take a flat screwdriver, and then just, just push it down into place. And it, go, it goes pretty easy. There are the pistons on. I usually throw some oil on everything, all the moving parts, uh, even some down there on the crank if it's been sitting for a while and it's dry. But now I just want to throw your last clip in. And you can put your rings on if you haven't done so already. These two stroke rings are pretty straightforward. Just want to make sure your writing is on the top. And then of course your gap goes where that uh, little pin is on your piston. Before installing the cylinder, it's a good idea to just to check for warpage. And you just take a straight edge and put it across the top. I mean, they, in the book they say it's not specified on a, you know, how much warpage is allowed. But it's a good idea just to go around, you know, check to see if there's any, you know, high spots for major warpage. But, you know, I've done quite a bit of these and I haven't seen any that are warped really bad. Then you're ready to install the cylinder and again, probably want to throw some oil around the inside. Make sure, you know, your intake is to the back. Make sure you have the piston in the right direction. But as for putting it on, it goes super easy. Slide over the piston until it's all the way down. Finger tighten the nuts and then we'll torque them to spec. With the cylinder on, then you'll want to install your base nuts. Now the base nuts torque spec is 25 to 29 foot pounds. So you want to go get them all finger tight. And then, you know, don't just start by tightening one down, but kind of go crisscross pattern until they're all torqued down to, again, 25 to 29 foot-pounds. After your cylinder's torqued down, you'll want to throw your head gasket on. Now you want to make sure this tab is in the, is in the front. Then you want to throw your head on. Temp sensor for the back. Install your six nuts. Torque those down to spec. And the spec for that, 18 to 20 foot-pounds. There's the cylinder head tightening sequence for 400. So this one first, this one second, this one third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Again, the torque spec, 18 to 20 foot-pounds. After the head is torqued down, you want to get your hose on, tighten the clamps, Put your exhaust manifold gasket, exhaust manifold, you'll want to install that. You'll want to grab your intake manifold and you'll want to install that on the intake side. And uh, the torque spec for those six millimeter bolts is again, you know, that same 72 to 96 inch pounds. Uh, the exhaust, you know, you could just tighten it till it's tight. If you want to torque it down to spec, you can. For the intake manifold, what you want to do Again, gasket maker around this. Put your gasket on. Then gasket maker again on top of that. And then you want to throw your intake on. There we have the intake manifold torqued down. We have your oil line. Last thing you'll want to do in this Polaris 400, you'll want to check the oil level. You do that by screwing this all the way in and checking on the knurled part of the dipstick. On a 350 model, you would actually check to see if the oil is at the bottom of these threads. So for this one, it took three and a quarter fluid ounces, and you could just put regular 1030. Uh, but there you have it. Now you're ready to install it in the four-wheeler and do the break-in procedure. And enjoy. Thank you. Bye.